it all over, Mr. Singley. long walk or I wouldn't mention it. Will you take a little drop of something, Mr. Bumble? Uh, not a drop, not a drop. Just a little drop with a little hot water and a lump of sugar. Uh, what is it? I'll not deceive you, Mr. B. It's gin. I'm obliged to keep a little in the house to put in the infant's daffy when they ain't well, Mr. Bumble. You're a very humane woman, Mrs. Corley. I... Uh... I shall take an early opportunity of mentioning it to the board, Mrs. Corley. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I, uh, I drink your health with cheerfulness, Mrs. Corley. We are forgetting business, now. The child was half baptized, Oliver Twist. He's nine year old today. He's the worst exposed boy I ever did see. Small wonder, though. We've never been able to discover his parentage. How can't he get a name, then? I missed it. You, Mr. Bumble. I, Mrs. Corbett. I name all our foundings in alphabetical order. The last was an S. Swabble, I named him. This was a T. Twist, I named him. Well, you're quite a literary character, sir. <laughs> well, well, perhaps I may be, Mrs. Corbett. Perhaps I may be. Now, let me see the boy. Make a bow to the gentleman. You ought to come along with me, boy. You ought to be presented to the board. Gentlemen, it is my considered opinion that our charity is being presumed upon. Yeah. Here, yeah, here. Yeah. This workhouse has become a regular place of entertainment for the poorer classes. <laughs> our duty to set this to rights. We'll stop it in no time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Come in. Case number six. Bow to the board. What's your name, boy? Oliver. Oliver Twister. You know it's your birthday? No, sir. Boy's a fool. Boy, listen to me. 
You know you're an orphan. What is that, sir? The boy's a fool. I thought he was. Hush. You know you've got no father or mother and were brought up by the parish, don't you? Yes, sir. I hope you say your prayers every night. Yes, sir. And pray for the people who feed you and take care of you. Yes, sir. Well, you're going to be educated and taught a useful trade. You'll begin to pick oakum tomorrow morning at six o'clock. <laughs> provision. Oh, Lord, we thank thee. Bumble, sir. Good morning. I've just taken the measure of the two women that died last night. Mm. Coffins are looking up, Mr. Father. Sir, oh, thank you. You'll make your fortune, Mr. Father. The prices allowed by the board are very small, Mr. Bumble. Uh, so the coffins. <laughs> well, well, Mr. Bumble, there's no denying that. But we must have some profit, Mr. Bumble. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, by the way, you don't know anybody who wants a boy, do you? A parochial plenty, sir. Liberal terms, Mr. Sabre. Liberal terms. I'll take him. Oliver. 
Pull that cap off your eyes. And hold your head up, sir. Be good enough to tell Mr. Sardry that the beetle is here. Oh, please be coming, sir. Is that you, Mr. Bumble? No one else, Mr. Sardry. Here, I brought the boy. Ah. So, this is the boy, is it? Yes. Who's that? My dear, this is the boy from the workhouse I told you of. He's very small. He is rather small, then. He is small, there's no denying it. But uh, he'll grow, Mrs. Sardry. I dare say he will, on our food and our drink. There, get downstairs, little back of bones. Charlotte? Yes, ma'am? Give the boy some of the cold bits put by for trip. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I suppose you're the new boy, aren't you? There you are. Oh, thank you. On the box, workout, on the box. Workers, shut out who I am. Mr. I'm Mr. Noah Claypole, and you're under me, so don't you forget it. Boy, that, my dear. He needs be. He eats enough. There's an expression of melancholy in his face, my dear, which is very interesting. Well? He'd make a delightful mute, my love. I don't mean a regular mute to attend grown up people, my dear, but only for children's practice. Depend upon it, it would have a most superb effect. Coffin. I'll fix the missing. No, no, no. I want to see the boy. Oh, what? 
He's out on the job. So who are you? I knew his mother. Nursed her when she died. Died in the workhouse, eh? I haven't got much time. I've got to see him. Mrs. Charlotte, Mrs. How is she this evening? There's much strength left in her. She's troubled in her mind. And when the fits aren't on, and that's not often, she keeps saying she's got something to tell. She wants to see the matron. You'd better fetch her. Yes? If you please, mister, old Sally's are going past. What's that to me? I can't keep her alive, can I? She says she's got something to tell that you must hear. She'll never die quiet until you come, mistress. Did you say any more, Martha, dear? Not a word. Cold tonight, Mrs. Corbett. Very cold indeed, sir. If you have to wait long, I shall be surprised. Put the light on the floor. She won't see it there. Good night, sir. Good night. Long, mistress. I never have to wait long. It'll come soon enough for us all. Now what? Now I think. It was the year. Never mind about the year. What about it? Uh, I don't know. What is I know. Uh, turn them away. This is anything. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. to tell after all. Nothing. Come up and sit by the fire, Noah, dear. I'll never shut that door behind Mr. Noah's back. I saved a nice bit of bacon for the master's breakfast for you, Noah, dear. 
Oliver, here's your tea, and take them bits. And make haste, because they want you to mind shop. Do you hear? Do you hear, Walker? What now? How's your mother? She's dead. What'd she die over at house? They said she died of a broken heart. What set you a sniveling? Not you. Oh, not me, eh? No, not you. You'd better stop saying things about my mother. Better stop. Walk out, don't be impudent. You know, Walk out. Your mother must have been a regular right down bad un. What did you say? A regular right down bad un, Walk out. And it's a great deal better, Walk out, that she died when she did. Or else she'd have been doing hard labour in Bridewell, or transporting, or Aaron. It's more likely than either, isn't it? <laughs> audacious young savage. Oliver. Yes? Do you know this here voice, sir? Yes. Ain't you afraid of it, sir? Ain't you a trembling while I speak, sir? No. It's not madness, ma'am. It's meat. What? Meat, ma'am, meat. If you kept the boy on grill, this would never have happened. What's the meaning of this? Young twist has turned vicious, sir. Can't the murder me, sir? Missy? 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 You're a nice young fellow, ain't you? He said things about my mother. By all accounts, she deserves them. That's a lie. Don't stare him, sir. Don't stare him. Get up to bed. Comes of a bad family, sir. Excitable natures, Mrs. Sarbury. That mother of his made her way here against difficulties and pain that would have killed any well disposed woman weeks before. My parochial apologies, sir.
Do you want him? Come on in. Here he is, Fagin. My friend Oliver Twist. Very glad to see you, Oliver. Very. Aren't we, my dears? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, how far have you come? I've been walking for seven days. Walking for seven days? Big yeah. shoulder. Do you know what a beak is, my dear? A bird's master. <laughs> Sit down, Oliver. A beak is a magistrate, my dear. Don't you take off the sausage. Sit down, Oliver. There's a great many of them, ain't there, my dear? Yes, sir. We just knocked them out ready for the wash. <laughs> I hope you've been at work, Dodger. Oh, Good boy. Good boy. And free watch. Genius worker, ain't he, Oliver? Very indeed, sir. <laughs> You'd like to make pocket handkerchiefs as easily as the artful dodger, wouldn't you, my dear? Yes, if you teach me, sir. Show, sure, my dear, we will. <laughs> work. Hey, work. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Have you seen? Nothing, sir. You were not awake an hour ago. No, no, indeed, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Tritia, my dear. I only tried to frighten you. Did you see any of those uh, pretty things, dear? Yes, sir. They, uh, they're mine, either. All I have to live on in my old age. They call me a miser. May I get up, Certainly, dear, certainly. They've gone to work, Ivor. Make them your models. Do everything they bid you do. Take their advice in all things. Especially the artful dodgers. He'll be a great man himself one day and will make you one too. Is my handkerchief hanging out of my pocket, dear? Yes, sir. See if you can take it without my feeling it. Is it gone? Yes. Here it is. Ah, oh, you clever boy. Here's a, a shilling for you. If you go on this way, you'll be the greatest man of the time. You do.
Is this the boy, sir? Yes, I'm afraid it is. Afraid? That's a good one. Poor little fellow, he's hurt himself. I did that, sir. I stopped him. I cut my knuckles against his mouth. Come on, kill it up. Make way there. Make way. Come on. Don't hurt him, officer. Oh, no, I won't. I can't help it. I can't help it. <laughs> oh, fight inside. Where's Ivor? What's it all about, Fagin? Uh, it's lucky the pot didn't hit me, or I might have settled someone. Come in, Mr. Sykes. Come in. None of your mystery, and you know my name. Come in, you sneaking cur. What are you hanging about there for? Go on, get in, will you? Will you take a drink, Bill? So you don't poison it, neither. Here. What's he been up to? Ill treating the boys again, eh? You avaricious old thing. You seem out of humor, Bill. Yeah, maybe I am. And you seem kind of out of thoughts, too. What's in the wind, Fagin? It's a new boy. The traps have got him. Oh, what of it? I'm afraid, you see, he may say something that'll get us into trouble. That's very likely. He had blowed upon Fagin. And I'm afraid, you see, if the game was up with us, it might be up with a good many more. It would come out rather worse for you than it would for me, wouldn't it, my dear? Oh, dear. Somebody ought to go and find out what's going on at the police court. Somebody ought to go there, Fagin. About time, too. Ah, Nancy. The very thing. She's a clever girl. Here's to her. Nancy will go, won't you, my dear? Where? Only just to the police court, my dear. What do you say? That it won't do, Fagin, so it's no use you trying it on. What do you mean by that? Well, what I say, Bill? Well, you're the very one for it. No one around here knows anything about you. And as I don't want them to, neither, it's rather more no than yes with me, Bill. She'll go, Fagin. Oh, no, she won't, Fagin. Oh, yes, she will, Fagin. Yes? Is there a little boy here? Who are you? His sister. You'll have to wait. The case is on now. Now, what is the charge against this boy? Stealing a handkerchief, Your Worship. I'd rather not press the case. Hold your tongue, sir! Are there any witnesses? None, Your Worship. What is your name? What is your name? He's been hurt, and I fear, I really fear he's very ill. Oh, yes, I dare say. Come now, none of your tricks show you, young vagabond. What is your name? What's your name? Hmm? 
Uh, he says his name's Tom White, Your Worship. Very well. Where does he live? Where do you live? Uh, where he can, Your Worship. Please, sir. Put out his mortar. Stop his muscles! Don't try and make a fool of me! to deal with the case, sir. Quiet! What's this? Who is this? I hit the bookstore. I saw a soul. It was another boy. Why didn't you come before? Couldn't get a soul to mind the shop. Swear the man. Bring him out of the court, can't he? He gets in a carriage with this gentleman and they drive off. He'll blow on a spike for certain. That's the boy, is it? It's the boy. Nice-looking boy, isn't he? I don't know. I only know two sorts of boys. Mealy boys and deep face boys. <laughs> and which is he? Mealy. Edwin in the habit of counting the plates at night. Because if she doesn't find a tablespoon or two missing one sunny morning, I'll be content to eat my head, sir. Don't move. Where does he come from? Who is he? What is he? If that boy doesn't deceive you, my good friend, I'll eat my head. And yours, too. We shall see. We will. <laughs> We will. Where am I? Hush, my dear. You must be very quiet. Will you be ill again? You've been very, very bad. That, that could be pretty lie. Lie down again, that's a dear. Oh, I don't mind me, Oh, now. 
No, no, you look rather hot this morning, Greg, and I'm afraid I've got cold. Now, uh, how do you feel, my dear? I really help you, sir. Good. Have you given him any nourishment, Gregor? He's going to have a basin of beautiful strong broth. Mm, a couple of glasses of port wine will do him far more good. Wouldn't they, Tom White? I mean, Oliver, sir. Oliver? Oliver White, hmm? Yes, sir. Twist. Oliver Twist. Hmm, that's a queer name. What made you tell the magistrate your name was White? I never told him, sir. Some mistake, some mistake. Hmm? Ah, have your broth, young man. We must get you strong again. And as soon as you're well enough, we must have a little chat. Oh, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Fool, bungler, liar. I paid you good money to make an end of the business. One sniveling boy. And you have to lose him. I'm worse off now than if I never set eyes on you. And farther still from what should be mine. What do I get? My money back? No, no, my dear, not that. I'll give you hope. Do you know the workhouse where the boy was born? Of course, I traced him from there. Then you must go back, my dear. You must go back. Listen. Tomorrow, two months, it was done. It seems a age. You're going to sit there snoring all day? I shall sit here as long as I think proper, ma'am. And though I was not snoring, I shall snore, gape, sneeze, laugh, or cry as the humor strikes me, such being my prerogative. Your prerogative? I said the word, ma'am. The prerogative of a man is to command. And what's the prerogative of a woman, in the name of goodness? To obey, ma'am. Ah. As your late unfortunate husband should have taught you. And then perhaps he might have been alive now. I wish he were, poor man. You won't! <laughs> Try your hardest, ma'am. It opens the lungs, washes the countenance, exercises the eyes, and softens down the temper. So cry away. Talk about your prerogative again, if you dare. Get up. Get away from here. Or I might do something desperate. Certainly, my dear, certainly. You were the beetle here once, were you not? I was. Morose and a beetle. What are you now? Master of the workhouse. Good. Now listen to me. I want some information. Carry your memory back ten years last winter. The scene, the workhouse, and the time, night. The place, the line in room. A boy was born. And with many boys. He was apprenticed down here to a coffin maker. You mean young Twist? There wasn't a obstinate... It's not of him I want to hear. It's of a woman. A hag that nursed his mother. Where is she? She died last winter. One moment. Yes? There was a woman with her when she died. How can I find her? Only through me. 
It will be worth a while. What if I paid you for nothing? Do you take it away again? I'm a woman here alone and unprotected. Uh, not alone, my dear. Nor unprotected, neither. You're a fool. You can hold your tongue. He'd better have it cut out if he can't speak in a lower tone. Now, let's hear your story. You were with this hand the night she died? Yes. There was no one by? No. She asked that we should be alone. Get her! Oh, she spoke with a young mother. I hope she was in that room bed. Yes. What of her? I loved her. She wasn't cold when I stabbed her. So what? It is the only thing she had. Gold. Gold? Go on, what of it? She charged me to keep it safe. Yes? The boy's name? They called him Oliver. I... I haven't told you what I want. No, oh, no, be quick. She'd run away. Her father. Yes? I was to tell you. To tell him. What were you to tell him? What? What? said more. You're lying. She never uttered another word. But it was then that it happened. What? Scrap of paper. What was it? A pawnbroker's ticket. Yes. The time was out in two days, so I redeemed the pledge. Where is it now? There. And is it all? All. And what you expected to get from it? Wash your hands and let me do your hair nicely for you, child. Why? What's the matter, Mr. Brown? No one's to see you, dear. We'll make you smart to six. Come in, Oliver. Come in. Yes, there are a good many books, are there not, my boy? I never saw so many, sir. How would you like to grow up a clever man and write books, eh? I think I'd rather read them, sir. What? Don't you want to be a book writer? I think I'd rather be a book seller, sir. <laughs> Well said, my boy. Very well said. Mm -hmm. Now, now, Oliver, I want you to pay great attention to what I'm going to say. You're not going to send me away, sir. No, my dear, I'm not going to send you away. Unless you give me cause. I'll never do that, sir. Never. Good. Somehow, I feel that you and I are going to be good friends. Oh, thank you. I trust you, Oliver. And I find myself more interested in your behalf than I can well account for. Even to myself. Are you fond of pictures, Oliver? I don't quite know, sir. Now, that is a portrait, a likeness. He's very pretty, sir. 
Yes, she was very pretty. Uh, any muffins for tea? Hello, what's that? The young Oliver Twist. You don't mean to say that's the boy who had the fever, I hope? That's all over now. Come and speak to my young friend. How are you, boy? A great deal better, thank you, sir. Hmm. And when are we going to hear an account of his history, eh, my friend? I think we'll have our tea first, eh, Oliver? Oh, is that the bookseller? Yes, sir. Uh, well, uh, stop the boy. There are some to go back. He's gone, sir. Oh, dear me. I particularly wanted to return some tonight. Send Oliver with them. He'll be sure to deliver them safely, you know. Yes, do let me go, sir. I'll run away. Ah. You shall go, my boy. The books are on a chair by my table. Fetch them down. Let me see. He'll be back in 20 minutes at the longest. Oh, so you really expect him to come back, do you? Oh, don't you? No, I do not. The boy has a new suit of clothes on his back, a set of valuable books under his arm, and a five-pound note in his pocket. If ever that boy returns to this house, sir, I'll eat my head. Oh. He ran away near a month ago from his parents. Hard working, respectable people. I didn't. He went and joined a set of things and bad characters and nearly broke his mother's heart. You little wretch. I'm not. I haven't got a mother. Oh, I'm the innocent brute. I'm the descendant brute. Oh, listen, how he brings it out. Come out to your mother, will you, you young dog? I don't know them. I don't belong to them. What's this? He's been stealing again. Oh, no, Bill. Come right, on. Right, that's the only way to bring him to his senses. It's all right. Doing good, too. Yeah, you get it, too. Come on, you young villain. Mine, Fagin. No, no, my dear. Mine, Bill. Mine. You shall have the books. If that ain't mine, mine and Nancy, that is, I'll take the boy back again. Now, come on, hand over, will you? Where is it? 
This is hardly fair, Phil. Hardly fair, is it, Nancy? Fair or not fair, give it here, you avaricious uh, old skeleton. Uh, uh, give it. Yeah. Take the book if you're fond of reading, if you ain't. Sell them. Help! Help! Who's on it? Bill, we'll tell the boy to beat me. Is right? No, no, no. You'll turn off of me, I'll ask for the lady. I don't care. I don't care. What's the matter here? The girl's gone mad. No, she ain't, thank you. No, she ain't. Don't think it. Yeah, keep quiet, will you? No. I won't do that neither. What do you think of that? So you wanted to get away, my dear? Did you? I wanted to get assistance. Called for the police. Did you? We'll soon cure you of that, my young man. It's done, baby. You got the boy. What more do you want? Let him be. Let him be, or I'll put that mark on some of you that'll send me to the gallows before my time. Why, Nancy, you're more clever than ever tonight. Ha <laughs> ha! You're acting beautiful, dear. Am I? Then take care I don't overdo it. You'll be the worse for it, Fabian, if I do. What do you mean by this? You're a nice one, a pretty subject for the boy to make a friend of. So help me, I am. I wish I'd been struck dead in the street before lending hand to bring him here. He's a thief, a liar, a devil, and all that's bad from this night on. Isn't that enough of the old wretch without blows? Come, come, Sykes, we must have civil words. Civil words, Bill. Civil words. Civil words, you villain. Yes, you deserve them from me. I see for you when I was a child, not half his age. And I see for you ever since. Don't you know it? And if you have, it is your living. Aye, it is. It is my living. On the cold, wet, dirty streets of my own. And you're the wretch that drove me to them long ago. A little kid me there. Day and night. Day and night. And night. And night. And night. And you say much more. <laughs> That's the worst than having to deal with women, my dear. But they're clever, and we can't get on in our line without them. Dodger, show Ivor to bed. He hadn't better wear his best suit tomorrow, had he, Faye? Certainly not. The Dodger shall give you another suit, my dear. For fear that Sunday one should get stolen. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Bedwin? I'm afraid he's lost his way, sir. You mean he never went there, eh? There you are. The boy's an imposter. It can't be. It can't be. What do you mean, it can't be? You old women never believe anything but quack doctors and lying storybooks. He was a dear, grateful, gentle child, sir. I know what children are and have done these 40 years. And people who can't say the same shouldn't say anything about them. That's my opinion. Be old well, I'll take the liberty, if you'll allow me, of helping us both to a glass of sherry.
No, we don't. And don't stand there talking to me and him as though you weren't the first what thought about the robbery. Somebody would hear us. Well, let him in. I don't care. There, there, my dear. It was only my caution, nothing more. Now, Bill, I've got the boy. You can. <laughs> What's the matter? I didn't know whether she might be out of sorts as she was before. Go on, Fagan. Tell him it, Oliver. Oh, you're a clever one, my dear. The sharpest girl I ever saw. It was about Oliver I was going to speak. <laughs> him. Yes, Bill, it's time he began to earn his bread. Besides, the others are all too big. He's about the size I want. And will do everything you want if you frighten him enough. When's it to be done? Ah, pretty soon. When is it to be done, eh? Tomorrow night. It's all arranged about bringing off the swag. It's all planned. Now you hold your tongue and keep your melting pot ready. That's all you have to do. Now leave us alone, will you? Never appeared in public before. Miss Lucy Willer. This morning early, my malady was such. I in my tea took brandy and I took a drop to my. This is the only proof of the boy's identity. I've got the young devil's money at last. Now you can do what you like with him. Get him hauled up for some felony, drag him through every jail in town. Not easy to train him to the business. That's your affair. If, um, it's not likely mine, but if the worst should come to the worst. It's no fault of mine, mind that thing. I had no hand in it.
What'll you give me? If you do it well, my dear. A guinea. One guinea. And that's what I never gave yet for such a pleasant piece of work. For the bill. Yeah. The provider? I got him. She's cried, keys, sent her bits, starfies. Not it forgotten. You take the crowbar. Take heed. He's a rough man. Mind. What's that? The boy. Oh. What did Mr. Sykes say? Gold, Nancy dear. It seems to go right through one. It must be a pierce that has found its way through your heart. Come here, young un. Come here! Do you know what this is? Yes, sir. Well, if you speak a word when we're outside, You'll get a bullet through your head without warning. So if you do make up your mind to talk, you'd better say your prayers first. Now then, look sharp. We're late as it is. Come on.
sir. You come in consequence of having seen my advertisement? Oh, not yet, sir. I'm afraid to speak. Down the steps. Why do you bring me to this dark and dismal place? Because there are those who would surely murder me if they knew I was here tonight. Young woman, if you have any intelligence of this poor child, in heaven's name, put me in possession of it. Do you know a man named Monk? Monk? What do you know of this man? Oh, before I tell you, sir, have I your promise that my secret will be strictly kept? I'll not turn on the others because, bad as they are, they never turn on me. Have I your promise for that? You have. And nobody will ever learn how you know what you do. Never. Some time ago, soon after Oliver was taken from your house in Pentonville, I saw this man once for the first time. And the other day, I saw him again. He came to a place on that place. There. Take care of that. And do the most you can with it. It's been trouble enough to get. What are you looking at me like that for? He's gone mad. I've got that to tell you will make you worse than me. I, I look sharp on that, she'll think I'm lost. Lost? She's pretty well settled that in her own mind already. Open your mouth and say what you got to say in plain words. Suppose that lad that's lying there. Well? Suppose that lad was to peach, to blow upon us all. First stealing out at night to find the right folks for the purpose, then having a meeting with them in the streets. Not grabbed, trapped, tried and brought to it on bread and water. But if his own fancy, do you hear me? Suppose he did this, what then? What then? I'd smash his head in. What if I did it? I that know so much and could hang so many besides myself. I'd beat your brains out. You would? Charlie. If it was Charlie or the Dodger or... No matter who, I'd do the same. Poor lad, he's tired. Tired with watching for her so long. With watching for her, Bill. What do you mean? Roger, Roger, tell me that again, once again, just for him to hear. Tell you what? That about. Nancy. What about her? You followed her? Yes. To London Bridge? Yes. Where she met a gentleman? So she did. A gentleman she'd gone to of her own accord who asked her to give up her pals, which she did. Well, she... she did all this. She told it all, every word, without a threat, without a murmur. She did, did she not? All right. That's just about what it was. What did she say about the boy? I told you that again. Again. Tell it again. Well, he asked her why she hadn't brought Nolly with her. Why? Why? Tell him that. Because he got her on the job. With him. <laughs> what more of him? Tell him that. Tell him that. Why? That she'd be in to London Beach tomorrow. Midday. Yes. Why? Because he'd be asleep. She made me laugh when she said it. Said what? That she was going to give him a drink of laudanum. Put me out of here! Bill! 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 Go 
Don't speak to me. It's not safe. You won't be. Yes, sir. You won't be too violent, Bill. I mean, not too violent for safety. Light enough for what I've got to do. Well, why are you looking at me like that? Oh, no! 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 You were watched tonight. Every single word you said was heard.
murder, brutal murder, murder, brutal murder. In the early hours of this morning, a young woman was brutally beaten to death by one William Sykes. If any personal person... <laughs> I first met this girl at London Bridge. I went there in response to an anonymous letter. I promised not to reveal the names of her associates. But in face of this terrible crime, I no longer consider that promise binding. the outside and come when I ring. Yes, sir. Where is my grandson? Grandson? I warn you that every word that passed between you and your criminal associates is known to me. Is this a trick to deprive me of my inheritance? Oh, you have no inheritance, for as you know, my daughter had a child. And it was you who, for your own gain, suppressed the only proofs of his birth and parentage. You could prove nothing. Your daughter ran away and was never heard of again. Coward. Liar. Where is Oliver Trish? I know nothing of him. We shall see. Sit down. How do you do, sir? I hope you are well. Take him away. Idiot. It only remains for me to tell you that neither of you will ever be employed in a position of trust again. You may go. Fool. I hope, sir, that this unfortunate little circumstance will not deprive me of my parochial office. Indeed it will. And think yourself well off besides. It was all Mrs. Bumble. She would do it. That is no excuse. You were present at the sale of the locket, and indeed are the more guilty of the two in the eye of the law. For the law supposes that your wife acts under your direction. If the law supposes that, then the law is a ass. A idiot. If that's the eye of the law, then the law is the bachelor. And the worst I wish the law is that his eye may be opened by experience. My He'll be took tonight. They're looking for his dog.
Take him away. The dog! Follow the dog! What are you going to do? Sell me or let me lie here till you aren't over. We're in this together, Fagan. Lock up. Get me a drink, will ya? Wagon! Last year, can't you say something? <laughs> Don't you know me, Dodger? Here. 